And we are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our second segment, which is going to be talking about the Oakland A's and their surprising season so far. Now, before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read in the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. Really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get back into our show for today. All right, as we've been talking about, we are going to be going over the Oakland A's and the surprising season. Uh, I thought it was a nice little transition there to go from the American League games to the A's and just what's going on with them. So the A's right now, um, as I'm putting it, it's the A's resurgence. They're 6-1 and one over their last seven, and not only are they 6-1 and one in their last seven, they've beaten quality teams. They've beaten the Yankees, who we know of as one of the five best teams in baseball. They've beaten the Orioles, who are in the same boat as the Yankees, one of the best side teams in baseball. They've also beaten the Pirates, who are have been a very quality team this year a team that has surprised a lot of people and just been very good. So when you look at the A's right now, you may think, okay, look, they're just getting lucky. There's not really much going on there. Um, I mean, they're 15 and 17. That's still not great. Yes, you're right. It's not great for any other team but the A's. But the A's, 15 and 7 is like being um, 162. A lot of people, not including myself, but a lot of people, had the A's pegged as one of, as the worst team in baseball history. I thought they were one of the worst, not the worst. But I, I did think they were one of the worst. I still think they are roster-wise. But when you take that into consideration from what people expected them preseason, all the shenanigans going on with their organization, moving around, uh, fans boycotting the team, having like a 1,000 people at opening day, um, the ownership being the ownership being a mess, just everything not working out for this organization. The fact that this team has been able to stay 15 and 17, played some really quality ball games, have a lot of good players on this team is very noble. I mean, they have a lot of good pieces right now. They don't seem to be going away that much. I think there's a lot of quality things here to like about this team. So, about if I'm an Ace fan, I'd be really excited. You, you know, going over this team right now, first of all, you have Tyler Nevin, guy you picked off of waivers who has been really great since coming to Oakland. This guy's been really solid and a key part of the middle of your lineup. Is he going to stay like this? I'm not exactly sure. I think he's a quality player, but I don't know if he's as quality as he's playing right now. You have Esther Ruiz, who surprisingly was sent down after having an amazing season last year, has been great so far not only with with the glove and and uh, on the base pass but with the bat as well which is a great which is a great part Abraham Toro has been very great has been very solid since coming over to Oakland Brent Rooker since going back to last year as well has been a very quality DH I'm surprised no one tried to trade for him JJ Blade was a guy who was looked at as a big bust coming out of Miami you know was the third overall pick was traded for not much and AJ Puck Puck has become a quality pitcher for the Marlins who's part of that pitching depth, but taking into consideration how big of a prospect Lede was, how how high people were on him, I was very high on him. I thought he was going to be a great left-handed power bat, but it just didn't work out in Miami. Was a bust, got traded to Oakland for, again, you know, kind of scraps for what we thought he could have got a few years ago. He's playing really well now in Oakland as well, so the A's have a lot of good pieces. They have a lot of players outperforming and doing well, and that's just the start of it. I mean, for the bullpen, they have arguably the best 8-9 in the league. You have Lucas You have Lucas Urkeg, who has come out of nowhere and been a very quality pitcher. 14 innings on the season now, has multiple, multiple holds, has been a very, very great bullpen arm for this A's team. He's been a guy that really has solidified this roster, so he's been really great there. And, of course, for the closer, I mean, you have Mason Miller, who was a former starting pitching prospect, pretty high one as well, a guy who ace fans might have looked at as not an ace of the future, but a really quality pitcher of the future, a guy who is going to be in the future of the A's organization, and he's had his transform into a closer for this year because of an elbow injury. They wanted to limit his innings, but also have him pitch and get him real real opportunities, which was the way they got him to be a closer, kind of, you know, uh, both, and he's been, he's been really great as well, I mean. I mean, he's been great throwing 100, 100, 101, 102 consistently. His secondary pitches haven't been bad as well. And 
when you're a closer, you don't need as great of secondary pitches. They help a lot, yes, but Mason Miller can just throw his fastball in there for three batters, get him out, and retire the side and win the game for the A's. So Mason Miller has been outstanding. I think it's going to be a really tough decision for the A's to say, you know what, are we moving this elite closer back to a starting pitcher? Now, I would personally say yes. I, I do think they should, but I understand that there probably is going to be some hang up there, but you'll have to see. Um, so the bullpen has been amazing as well, which is a great addition. Now, the only problem I do see with the A's right now is their starting pitching. It has not been great. Ross Stripling and Alex Wood, two guys who came over in trades and separate trades from the same team, the Giants, have not been great. We expect to be veteran arms that could solidify that A's rotation, maybe bring a, bring a little bit of leadership to that rotation, to that clubhouse, and they have just not been good. Um, you're kind of seeing now why the Giants traded them. You have Joe Boyle, who a lot of people are expecting to break out after seeing some uh, quality starts in there from last year, quality stuff as well. Um, just a lot of stuff to be happy about if you were a Ace fan with Joe Boyle, but he has not been great either. His underlying stats do show a little bit that he has gotten unlucky, but it's not to the not to an extreme sense where he's just getting super unlucky and he's going to be an Ace after this. No, he's still, he's been unlucky, but not as unlucky. But you do have J.P. Sears, who, while he hasn't been great this season, kind of in the same boat as Boyle, there is some underlying statistics there that could show he's getting a little unlucky. And even without the stats, I still like Sears a lot. I think he has really good stuff. I think he's going to be a quality pitcher. I've been a fan of him since he was a prospect back with the Yankees. I think that overall J.P. Sears is going to be a big part of the A's future. I think he is going to be a big part of their future rotation. Um, I think there's a lot to like there if you are an A's fan with him. So... Yeah, I'm definitely watching him. And then the big guy, of course, is their ace, Paul Blackburn. Paul Blackburn is just an extraordinary pitcher. Was an all-star for them last year. Was their best pitcher by far. Was a guy who was absolutely great. I mean, he's just... He's been, he's been really, really good. He's been really, really great for them. And I think that there's a lot to like if you're an ace fan with, with Paul Blackburn. He, he's probably going to be traded at the trade deadline. Won't sugarcoat that. I mean, yes, the A's are doing well, but they're not. I don't think anyone in their right mind expects the A's to do this well for the rest of the season. Maybe not as horrible as we expected, but not as good as they're doing right now and not almost 500. That's kind of crazy. So I do think Paul Blackburn is going to be traded at the deadline. I think there are going to be a lot of teams bidding for his services. Um, there's so many teams that need a good quality starting pitcher. And I think Blackburn is going to get a lot. I think there could be a potentially big haul for him. So many teams, I think, about they need uh, that need pitching. And, you know, it isn't the best trade deadline we've ever seen, so I think Blackburn could be one of the more sought-after guys. A guy that, again, is going to go for a lot on the market is going to be a significant arm dealt, so that could be something there. But let's say he does stay. Let's say, you know, he does... He does become a really quality starting pitcher. Not become, but stays a really quality starting pitcher for the A's. And the A's decide, you know what, we don't want to trade him. We think we're close to contention. We want something for the new Vegas and Sacramento fans to watch the seasons going past this. We want to keep Blackburn. We want to make him part of our core, which is also possible as well. So I think for the first time in a little bit, there are building blocks to this A's organization. All the guys I've mentioned. Shea Langlier is another guy who is great this year, might be struggling a little bit, but I still I still have faith in him that he could potentially be a really good player. There are some prospects as well. Jacob Miller, a guy he just drafted. Max Muncy, not the guy from the Dodgers, their own guy, their own prospect. He's another guy that potentially could be a big piece of the A's future and is going to be uh, someone to watch if you are an Oakland, Sacramento, or Vegas fan. So that's another thing there, you know, um, I did mention Jacob Wilson. Like I said, he's a really great prospect for them as well. But also Luis Morales, who's a quality starting pitcher prospect. Denzel Clark is a guy I like. Um, you know, as I said, Max Muncy, the third of the Naylor twins, Miles Ma Naylor, who also is a quality, who also quality, I believe. Freddie Tarnock, who they got in the Sean Murphy trade, I think he's going to be really quality as well. Connor Hogland, who has fallen down a little bit in the prospect rankings for them, but I still think could be a quality arm for them in the future. So, yeah, I think that overall, um, I think that 
they are going to be a really quality they are going to have a, a lot of quality players coming up soon I think that they have a little bit of a core brewing and that's not something a lot of people expect that they have a lot of a lot of good things going for them right now their bullpen is great they have a lot of quality uh, a lot of quality position players that no one really expected so we'll be watching them overall my thoughts on the A's are that I think I underestimated them and I think a lot of people underestimated them as well I think that there is a significant amount of things going well for them and a significant amount of things that are going to continue going well for them things that are quality and we might have overlooked but at the same time do I think they're going to continue with this no I don't do I think they're going to end up finishing third in the AO West no I don't do I think they're going to finish last I do but I don't think they're going to be as horrible as we expected. I mean, a lot of a lot of people expect them to have 40, 45 wins. Maybe they'll get 60 now, 65, maybe even 70. There's a lot going right for the A's right now. And while they're while I do think that eventually they are going to quote come back down to earth, I think that there is some some quality things here to look at if you are an A's fan. Some things to assess and say, you know what, it isn't all bad. Uh, from the baseball side, we have a lot of core going for us. 6-1 in our last seven, beating some quality opponents like the Yankees, like the Orioles. So if I'm an A's fan, I'd be happy with the baseball stuff right now. I mean, it's unfortunate that they are doing so well and we cannot focus on the team on the field because we have to focus what's going on off of it. Taking a team away from a historic baseball town in Oakland, I don't like the decision. I understand that the fans weren't showing up and, you know, the ownership and all that, but the ownership, you know, didn't do a great job attracting fans there. Um, they didn't do a good job spending money, getting fans excited about the team, and the A's fans saw how bad the ownership was. They protested. They didn't go to many games. I, You know, you saw, you see the A's fan base to uh, be all come together when they do all come together they're a really great bunch they've done it for playoff games in the past with the Oakland drum they came together last year for the reverse protest where they all showed up for the game instead of not showing up for the game to show them we are still a fan base we are still really quality and this is what you're taking away from us so as it is unfortunate that they are taking this A's away from Oakland I do think it is a travesty I think it is something that should not have happened but um going on the field right now the legacy of the A's is still going to go on I know I'll probably still call them the A's for a few years I'm not sure if they're going to continue being called the A's obviously they won't be called Oakland I'm sure, I don't know next year if they're going to be called Oakland or Sacramento but we'll be seeing about that I mean Sacramento and, our, and Oakland are pretty close to each other anyways so I don't think it's a significant uh, dilemma that you're going to have to d decide so yeah I mean we'll be watching we'll be watching the A's in the future now but I don't think the A's franchise is as bleak as people thought now. I think there are some quality pieces here, some quality players that could potentially be moving this team in the right direction and this franchise in the right direction. And I'm excited to watch them. I'm excited to see what does happen and overall the the season that they're going to have. So, yeah, um, that's my piece on the A's, just talking about them and their surprising season. Six and one of their last seven. Again, I think that they are a better team than we expected, but still not a Still not a great team. Still not a team that is probably going to finish above last in that AL West. But hey, the Astros off, sell off at the deadline and continue having no pitching like this. Maybe we'll see them finish even fourth. The Angels really fall down after that trout injury. Maybe we'll even feel them, see them stay at third. But we'll have to see. It's going to be an inter they're going to be an interesting team and franchise to watch, and I'm really excited to see. So that was my segment on the A's, my segment two, we're going to our third segment, which is talking about the National League games of yesterday and just all the action that happened there. And then after that, we're going to our fourth segment, uh, which is related to it. So yeah, stick around and uh, see you after the break. So thanks, Sam. Bye. Looking